one of the things we need to discuss is what these men, who, who the leaders are, who the promoters of this teaching are. Uh, I had mentioned Chuck Missler and his book, Alien Encounters, co-authored co with Eastman back in 1997, really laid the groundwork. And um, I started reading Chuck Missler's book uh, just out of curiosity because it was quoted from so many sources. But I discovered by the time I hit the second chapter that a lot of it intertangled with my own life and my own testimony. Because at one point in my life, before I was a Christian, I was deeply involved in UFOlogy, the whole New Age movement, and uh, transcendental meditation, things like that. And I discovered, as I was reading chapter two of Missler's book, that he was quoting extensively from Eric von Donneken's thesis that uh, space aliens had come to the Earth through all sorts of ancient periods of time mm -hmm. and left all sorts of archaeological relics and um, evidence that they had come. And uh, Missler started using this ancient astronaut theory that Eric von Donneken had, had written about. Well, I had actually served on an, uh, an archaeological dig in 1974 in which I was told by the archaeologists who had actually worked on a number of the sites that Eric von Donneken had worked on that uh, he was not a credible scientist yeah. and uh, they dispelled any beliefs I might still have retained about the man. Uh, so in addition to Eric von Donneken, I found out that Chuck Missler was using a source, this Richard Boylan, I, I misspoke, it's Boylan, uh, this psychologist who believes that these ancient aliens and modern aliens are coming and mingling with earth women and creating these new age star children. And I also discovered that Chuck Missler was relying on channeled demonic transmissions. And what I mean by that is that in the New Age movement, they believe that demons speak through people and they actually write down and record what the demons are saying. And so he was uh, quoting from these so-called reputable sources that were uh, actually the Pleiadians, the Raelians, and Ashtar Command. Now these are UFO codes cults. You can go out on even Wikipedia, for example, and research the Pleiadians, the Raelians, and Ashtar Command, and these were presented in Missler's book as though they were credible sources of information, and his entire thesis then was built on their stories that these space aliens are coming back to Earth, and they are awaiting the return of these space aliens. They're cults. They're religious cults. And so um, I, I found that his sources were extremely questionable. And I'm sure you found the same thing, Gaylene, as you've read, read the materials from the other men who subsequently built upon Missler's thesis. Well, that's because they had no Bible to go by. They had to use ufology, um, mythology, uh, Freemasonry, uh, all the darkest sources that you can think of, this is where they've got the information. Now you mentioned something about Donakin's thesis that these beings that came through these dimensions mm -hmm. came to the earth and built all these archeological relics or stone things. Um, well, all of the, the postmodern prophecy paradigm teachers teach similarly the same thing. For example, they all believe that the Nephilim built the pyramids at Giza. So you'll be reading along in an article and there'll be a long exposition on the pyramids of Giza or uh, Stonehenge or crop circles, all of the fringe type stuff that have nothing whatsoever to do with scripture or the gospel of salvation. They've just delved headlong into this. Now there's some underlying things going on behind all of that. Um, in one of the articles I wrote, it had to do with geomancy and cryptic mystic math, I think was the name of the article. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these men ascribe some kind of a, a force or a power in these uh, megaliths, mm -hmm. uh, monuments. Yes. Uh, they ascribe some kind of um, energy. It's a mm -hmm. sacred space, they say. And so someone like uh, the late uh, David Flynn who is heavily promoted uh, to this day by Tom Horn, 
Uh, he wrote some really disturbing books. One of them was The Temple at the Center of Time. And in that book, his thesis was that you could lay, lay a ley line, which is an imaginary line similar to a meridian on the body or acupressure point, that there's some kind of uh, divine information. We can divine it by laying a line. Uh, for example, the temple in Jerusalem to any geographic city in the, in the world. And with that, you can combine these uh, numbers and magic spaces and things that he got from Freemasonry in the occult world, and you can actually divine prophecy that way. Oh my. You can, you can take the Bible, for example, which he did. He took uh, in, in Joshua, for example, you know, when Joshua had to circle seven times. Well, those numbers all mean something to these people. And Chuck Missler, of course, in all of his work with the numbers and the decoding and being able to divine information, secrets, unlock secrets, all using architecture and numbers and places on the earth. And I mean, these men have gone so far out that they actually uh, say that there are monuments even on Mars. Yes, actually, we wrote a whole post about Nephilim on Mars because they actually teach that right now the Nephilim could be headquartered on Mars. I, and that I it's that. an it's alien outpost, yes. Very yes, yes, they're getting ready to invade Earth. But yes, uh, Chuck Missler, I was shocked when I was reading his book that he actually relied very heavily on the K Kabbalah. Yes. And I'm sure that's what undergirds his book, Cosmic Codes, as well, is the idea that you can divine things mm -hmm. from worldly elements. And perhaps you have a comment on that. Well, only that Kabbalah uh, existed before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Because what you had was the ending of the prophetic voice for the death of Malachi. The Jews were not satisfied that they could no longer hear the voice of God, and so they wanted to mystically encounter God. So that uh, provided, I think, the stimulus for Kabbalah. And yeah. there, is, uh, there is something called Merkaba mysticism, and what it is, it's a chariot mysticism. And uh, they get it out of Ezekiel, uh, because Ezekiel saw chariots, and Elijah was taken to heaven in chariots. And so the thinking is that uh, if we get it right, if we get the avenue right and we get into the right sphere, so to speak, we can actually get into heaven to experience heaven. And this idea of going to heaven and coming back and experiencing heaven, though it may be popular today, it is nothing new. No. Mystics have been doing it for, for centuries, if not millennia. Yeah. 